How are we all? It's Wednesday, it's Saturday, the 25th of November. I'm in the indoor. And uh, the fish overall are looking great. They're just on time for the Achiba to swim under me. What a lovely fish that is. Um, now, as you can see, the fish on the whole are doing well. The Maritan Koaku has settled in now. Um, there was a little bit of um, cloudiness on, it, on its head and stuff, which I reported about a month ago. But that seems to have settled down now. Um, and what you will know, guys, is the temperature is the 25th, Saturday, the 25th of November. It's been by far the coldest night and probably the coldest 24 hours, I would say, of consistent lows, not just temperature dropping and then coming back up like this. It's kind of, we're sort of getting a low flat line now of, we're probably not going to see many days above 10 degrees C now, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah i'm in the indoor pond so why i'm in here is yesterday i've decided i've made the bold decision i was looking at hooking like i say my heater onto this one and i still might yeah i've got the bits and bobs out see how i could do it and but i've not got my head around it yet so what i've thought to do instead is actually tweak my heaters up three kilowatt heater that is Two or three i think it might be three and i've got one here as well and that's currently on so what i'm doing is i am tweaking those so hopefully i get an ambient of 12 degrees in here feels lovely at the minute in here and at the minute it actually is uh 11 degrees so i'm about a degree short so I didn't quite get the temperature on the side of these thermostats. They've got them on the side, which is not great. So it's not that easy to get them right. Um, so I had them set up for about 10 degrees and that is what it's delivered. Cause I've marked the side of the actual heater where I've achieved it before in the past. So I left it on that, but obviously on this thermometer here, about a month ago, this was just under about 12. So if I'd have got it right, I'd have maintained that temperature for the last month, but it would have cost me obviously a lot more. But anyway, so I'm trying to achieve, so the last 24 hours, I've actually tweaked these up. I've just come in here now, and the pond, and that's at 11. That's at just in between 10.5 and 11. So I've just gone over there and turned that thermostat up, and I've been over to that one and turned that thermostat up. And then they'll start kicking on and off. I'll give that a day, come back in here tomorrow because it's lovely and clear outside today and cold, as I said. So I'll come back in here on Sunday the 26th and come and see what they are like, the temperatures like in here then. And then once I reach about 12 degrees in here, this water, because it's cooler, this will draw the warmth out the air and then reach the same ambient temperature. So I don't need to heat the water in here because I'm doing it by eating the air in here, which in turn will eat the water. Hope that makes sense. Uh, the indoor pond's doing well. I have noticed though that the little shiro that I've got in here, the tosai, is a little bit quiet. Now I don't like that. It's normally with those and they're just moving about a bit, look as you can see. But this one, if I kick the side of the pond, not moving and normally that would agitate or move a fish but it's not so it's either really spooked and just hiding or it's a little bit his behavior is just a little bit for me raising my eyebrows and there is a little bit I, can't, well, I don't know so really in an ideal world you know I probably shouldn't have bought that Tosai at this time he had about a month ago no a couple of months ago I think it was so my pond water then was like 14 15 degrees but obviously since then it's lowered so but ideally a fish like that wants to go into like 24 degrees for a few months now and just get it warm and growing and stuff like that so so that's another reason so i made the bold decision to go for about 12 degrees i've been watching some videos and seeing some advice by ricky stoddart or koyo sale all sale and around 12 this is another method in my madness 
I've just run out of the feed now of the Kenko, the colour. So they've been on that for the last couple of months, a few months. So that's done with now. So I've got a sack of 15 kilogram sack of Saki Akari. So Ricky believes that at 12 you can still feed Saki Balance. So to keep them ticking over, you're obviously not going to be chucking loads of food in once or twice a day. So instead of me buying a different food, I'm going to crack that food open, bring it here today, the Saki Balance, and then just hand feed them. Um, not yet. I'm going to give them a break for a week or so. And then get this temperature back up. And then once I reach about 12 and they seem settled, they should be ferocious and hungry by then. And then I'm going to get the sack in here and then start maybe feeding. I mean, they are really active, look. Really active. But if I wanted to um, not feed sake, I would have to look for another food that is okay at around about 10 degrees C. So... So yeah, I've got two choices. I either leave these at 10 and buy different food for the winter and just keep them balanced. Or I raise the temperature a couple of degrees, get them to 12, around 12, 13, and then just and feed them with the uh, Saki Hikari. I think the Saki Hikari, I think it's only 37% protein anyway. It's not a lot of protein at all. Um, and a couple of days just to keep them maintained and they keep the body shape and the body structure and Saki Balance, I mean, I fed Saki Balance in my, in this one last year for a good few months with this at 24 degrees and by God did it get them fish going at 24 degrees on Saki Balance. So God knows what it will do on growth. And then if I keep them on Saki Balance ticking over, over winter, maybe when it gets really cold, and I'm really struggling to keep it at that temperature. I'll see what happens. I might have to review and then have them a month or two off with no food at all. And that might be January, February. Then March comes and then the season kicks off again. I'll probably have, I might have half a sack or whatever I've got left of the sack of your balance then. I'm going to then add it, buy a sack, go to a koi show early on in the season. And I'm gonna get a, a sack of um, 15 kilos sack of growth. And then they're going to go on Saki Grove and then mix the remainder of that balance in with it. And then they'll be on that all summer and hit them with that. So that's that. So they're doing great. Um, yeah, that one's got a little few more sores and they're still the sore on the side. So that temperature going up again will do it well. It's recovering, I can tell, you can just tell. But there's always that risk when the water's cold it's not going to recover as well and that's the only risk when you're outdoor ponds and it's really cold if they've got any sores or ulcers come in the chances of it recovering is very slim but this has still got salt in as well so um apart from that there's not a lot to uh, report really so yeah let me see this I think that's gone off now yeah that's come back on so I'll leave it on there and just keep tweaking them until I get the temperature right it's gonna I figured obviously it's gonna cost me more money but if I was eating the water that's gonna cost me money anyway and look at the end of the day whoops my fish feeders have dropped off the chair um, I've took these off now because they're empty so there's no food going in this pond anymore so i'll get some sake balance in there and get the temperature up so yeah i've just figured look i used to have my greenhouse up the garden i used to heat that to i think it was about 14 degrees so that used to cost me a lot of money with a small eater and these fish you know they're not i'm not collecting you know really really cheap fish now I've got no koi now, I've got rid of all my koi that weren't what I call Japanese. So these all in here were all Japanese, these are all Japanese, you know, not bad quality fish. So obviously the best quality fish I've got in here now is this Showa, I think that's Tamora. Um, that one just flashed then, little bastard, this is, I don't know why that's done that, that one. 
um, that shower as well and then um, obviously the Maritan Koaku which got a big head on it hasn't it the size of that head so hopefully I want to really get them growing but I'm not going to get it growing at below 10 degrees or 12 degrees they're not going to you know what, what it's going to do at 12 degrees is maintain the heat so the difference from 12 to 13 to 10 and below which this would get if I weren't you know eating it is it's not going to lose body shape and body weight it'll obviously burn off fat because the body will start losing fat it'll start using fat as the energy source but if I can put the uh, keep them on sake then obviously that will maintain them so it'll give them a good start for spring and into next summer so they're not undernourished or lost a lot of body fat and lost a lot of you know body shape you're maintaining that body shape so because I've got some you know half decent quality in here now and also in here that cost I figured is going to be worth it and I will obviously get more enjoyment because when I come in here it'll be warmer so in here now like I say getting towards 11 degrees and if we go outside you won't be able to tell but there's a bee there look one of my honeybees which is come out for a bit of a cleansing flight but that'll die yeah just look just stuck there slowly dying that's what they do it's obviously not a winter bee and you'll see the odd one that literally just comes out for a cleansing flight to have a wee and a poop that one just came out look at the odd one but um yeah so it's really cold today it's what you call a proper wind today with the sun out look the low sun comes up here all day and uh yeah i don't think the temp i think the temperature with the sun out at the minute is probably about seven degrees so it's definitely single digits so the actual pond i'll go this way because it's clean on the feet There's the outdoor pond, the shower and everything's off now, it's just all internal returns. Very quiet this is. So the water temperature in there at the moment is 10. And the minimum it's been is 7.9. Wow, 7.9. So there's the difference. So at the minute is one degrees difference but the difference is the minimum there so far has been 7.9 it was probably last night but in that one the minimum hasn't changed i've had a look and i might pop a, um, an image up on this video if i remember i've checked my inkbird thermometer which is the log the data logger and it hasn't changed all night that temperature on that indoor pond hasn't dropped so that's maintained 11 and a half what uh, 10 and a half what temperature it is now so in this pond, this has dropped to 7.5. So its minimum has been 7.5 and it's now 10. So the fish won't like that. But also comes a risk with a bit of temperature is parasites and stuff, they can still maintain and tick over. Whereas when it's really cold like this, there won't be no, there'll be parasites in there, but they won't be active at all. So you've got that benefit when it's cold. So you've still got to be vigilant when it's um you're running a little bit of temperature christmas tree's gonna be nice it's doing well this year hey old summer high five hey god papa high five high five good girl so yeah what can we say quiet times so yeah it's, it's about seven degrees I think at the moment I mean I've only been out uh, probably a minute or so and my hand my hands feel cold already it really does 
winter flowering jasmine that's the nickname for it yellow so you'll get winter flowers starting to come now i'm gonna go back in that warmth so when i go from this temperature here this is when going into this greenhouse fills yeah, when I walk in here, it feels tropical. It's not, obviously, but going out there, five to six degrees to 11 degrees in here just feels, oh, so much better. So the minimum this has reached was 8.6. But that's before now. That was about, I think, the last cold, the real cold spell I had was about a good week or so ago. So I've actually got no food to give them now and they're looking interested, aren't they? I've actually not got anything. I've got no food whatsoever. Oh, I have Sakiakori. But really, Sakiakori balance, on the bag it recommends 18 degrees and above. Um, but it depends, I think, on your methodology. Some people like just hear, hear and read stuff. Oh yeah, we're gonna switch to wheat germ at this time of year, and that's it, just wheat germ and nothing else. But I think that if you get a low protein quality food, that's the way to go instead of wheat germ. Because with wheat germ, I just find that it just goes in. Yeah, they might enjoy it, but it just comes out as complete waste. That's what I found with wheat germ. It's just like a I don't know, it just seems like a byproduct. There you go, it's not very, don't seem very digestible, is what I'm trying to say. So they don't really digest a lot of it, so you get a lot of waste and floaties and stuff like that, or at the bottom of your pond, that's what I've found in the past. So, but with Saki Akari Balance, if you can keep that going, like I say, to keep them maintained, then you'll find that the waste will be very minimal. If they don't like it, they get the temperature. If, it, if it's not working right, what you will find, or I find, is you get floaters um, and like poop in, in sacks and stuff. You get more of that type of stuff when it's cooler temperature. Yeah, the head on that, that Maritank or Aku. Oh, good head. So, on that note, yeah, that fish is still there, which is not not good at all. A bit of a worry that, so we'll have to keep an eye on that one. That's what I mean, being vigilant, gotta keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on things. So there we go. Sorry there's not a lot to um, report and stuff at this time of year. Um, hopefully you're finding it interesting. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people will. So I'm gonna keep doing the videos, just one a week, just in this format, just like an update, see what's going off. Just keep connected and things like that. Just keep the hobby going and uh, just show continually what's happening from day to day, week to week on the indoor pond indoor ponds and outdoor ponds and anything else that may crop up i.e like this lovely japanese neophonesia that's currently in flower takara nishiki see how it's the japanese culture with these plants that i collect as well is similar to koi in terms of names and the way that they do varieties in the colour of the different leaves look, all these are different varieties. So like you get different koi varieties, the Japanese have done it, and the history is very similar to these, to this um, Japanese orchid, Neophonesia. They also um, come from China and also Korea. But the Japanese have got it again like koi varieties got it down to a fine art of varieties they will see a trait breed it consistently and then give it a name give it a variety through generations of 
you know, breeding and stuff like that. And these are doing well. I bought these in, saved these from out the garden, the geraniums. So these have continued. I've just put them in some new dry compost, just to keep them ticking over, and they are doing. But what you have to be careful of if you do bring plants indoors is it's now because it's warmer in here you'll get pests so to see these that's actually white fly you can get white flying aphids so um, on that note I'm going to use some SB plant invigorator and just give them a little spray just to keep them at bay hopefully Got the citrus, lemon, it took ages to come this had taken months to uh, develop. Lemons do on these tr on trees, lemon and orange trees, this is a lemon. And then I had a flower come and hopefully I've pollinated that, so hopefully this will grow into a fruit over summer. So there we go. Thanks for watching guys. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. If you haven't hit the like button, tap the like button. And I've just seen another fricker flash. This is why you've got to be vigilant. Unless you're paranoid, don't it? So since I've been in here, I've seen two flash for some reason. So vigilance, watch your koi, see what they're doing, keep an eye out. And if you do see something unusual, don't panic. Don't hit the chemical button and just keep being vigilant and just see what they do and then act accordingly. On that note, see you on the next one. Bye.